we have three uh, speakers. Uh, each one will give the talk around 15 uh, minutes. So after the uh, talk, you can ask um, questions like you, probably the time allows for two or three questions. Then after all the uh, talks, we will have around 20 minutes for the, for the Q&A uh, where you can ask more questions. So let me introduce um, the first speaker um, is Greg uh, Jason from University of Southampton. So the talk about anti-renocent um, holocaust fiber within octave spanning bandwidth for short haul data communication. So uh, Greg um, re received uh, the master's degree from University of Southampton and the PhD in the field and in the helicopter dust clouds. Then he joined University of Southampton and working on um, micro structured optical fiber manufacturing. So uh, he was the recipient of a research fellowship from the Royal Academ Academy of Engineering. Uh, he also developed different technology to model the flow of glass during microstructured fiber drawing, which allowed the team to draw fiber virtually. So, um, Greg, um, you can take over from now. Hello, thank you for that introduction. Um, uh, yes, so um, I'm going to present about um, this Holocore Fiber paper. So just let me share my screen. Okay. So this um, paper is titled Anti Resident Holocore Fiber with an Octo Spanning Bandwidth for Short Hold Data Communications. Oh, yeah, I don't present... believe we can see the slides. If you could. Oh, I pushed not enough buttons. How's that? Yes, there you go. Fantastic. Okay. Um, yeah, so this, this, this work was first presented at OSC in 2016 um, and subsequently published in an extended version in, in JLT in 2017. So there's, a lot has happened since then. So I'll, I'll do my best to um, give you a little overview of, of more recent activities since this paper was produced, as well as uh, give you a rundown of this work as well. <clears throat> okay, so the abstract um, discusses uh, the loss, the bandwidth, and the data transmission. So if we just break that down, so this uh, fiber is proved to be a single mode uh, anti resonant holocore fiber. Uh, with a minimum loss of 25 dB, dB per kilometer at 1200 nanometers. Extremely wide transmission window um, was, was demonstrated and we interfaced it to SMF28 um, spliced and demonstrated three wavelengths um, on off keying across this transmission window. Okay, I'm sure if you can hear that fire alarm, hopefully it'll stop in a moment. Um, <laughs> So in this talk, I'm going to give a brief overview of what Holocore fibers are um, and the state of the art in 2016, uh, show you what we demonstrated in this paper and uh, go over what we've done since. So Holocore fibers, well, there are several varieties um, in the literature. So there's the uh, Holocore photonic band cap fiber, which has got this honeycomb structure. The Kagomi, which is got this uh, basket weave uh, lattice, this star basket weave lattice. And this is also an anti resonant fiber. And then we've got the tubular fiber, which is the focus of this work. Um, so both the tubular and the Kagomi are anti resonant. And that means that the, it's the thickness of that membrane which gives us, uh, gives us the guiding uh, confinement in, in that hollow core. And because it's guiding light in a hollow core, which we end up with a very low glass overlap um, with the light, which gives us extremely low nonlinearity. Propagation at near vacuum speeds, so we're propagating 99.99% in air, so it's almost as fast as free space. Um, and the low material 
um, overlap means low and flat chromatic dispersion across across the transmission windows. And we also have the advantage of high damage tolerance if we are transmitting extremely high laser powers, which is possible in these sorts of fibers. Additionally, you can guide beyond the bulk material transmission. So silica has been known to guide beyond uh, two and a half micron um, with lower, much lower losses than, than the bulk uh, material allows. So way back in 2016, a uh, number of notable events, some elections, and the passing of, of David Bowie, to name but a few. So if you can cast your mind back to then, well, uh, hollow core fiber looked a bit different back then as well. So we had <coughs> um, photonic band gap fibers were the, were the promising technology at the time. So these were first demonstrated in 1999, and then quickly in 2004, extremely low result of 1.7 dB per kilometer was shown. Um, since then, some other achievements, single mode transmission, uh, larger core structures, and um, wide bandwidth uh, examples, as well as um, uh, an extremely long example, 11 kilometer example was made. Um, but this is not um, about holocaust on bang at fiber, this is about the alternative technology, um, which is anti-resonant fiber. Um, but before we go on, I just mentioned briefly this low loss result. Um, so 2004, extremely low loss, but narrow bandwidth. So the, the transmission window is, is um, broken up by these resonances, the surface mode resonances caused by the, the junctions, not around the lattice. So that meant that no data transmission was demonstrated. Um, however, this low loss result did stand until 2018. So it's a very significant result. So anti-resonant fibers um, in, in development um, in parallel with holocaust type bang up fiber, but the losses were quite high. So they didn't get received quite as much attention at the time. Um, so the, the progression was, was driven by many groups around the world. And the technology progressed with the, the development of the lattice um, and and the core surround. Um, but it was also noted that you didn't need the entire lattice to demonstrate low loss. Um, and then other notable um, improvements came from adding a, a negative curvature, so-called negative curvature around the core, which pushes the, the light field further away from the lattice and away from those junctions, which improved uh, the structure dramatically. Reduction of the cladding to just a collection of, of tubes um, and then methods to drive that light further away from the glass until in 2013, the first non-touching tube structure was demonstrated. And this meant that you have a nice purity of anti-resonant fixes, which gave a very clean transmission bandwidth. So these um, non-touching tubular fibers are really now the new generation of anti-resonant fibers. Um, so that thickness gives the confinement, which means we get a nice clean uh, transmission without um, lots of resonances breaking up that transmission window. And it can be extremely broad. Um, so this is the, that first result from 2013. The thicknesses were larger, so the transmission windows operate in a, in a longer wavelength than normal telecoms. And the losses were quite high. So next came uh, another example with many small tubes. Um, again, high losses, 120 dB per kilometer and slightly longer uh, wavelengths. Trying to bring that wavelength towards uh, uh, 1550, we've got thicknesses around 440 nanometers. But again, the losses are still quite high. So in this work, we demonstrate less than 30 dB per kilometer. So a big step forward from, from these examples and a, and a bandwidth much closer to telecoms uh, wavelengths, um, which means we can run data transmission experiments. So this is that fiber. Um, we have around a 40 micron core, seven capillary tubes, each around 20 microns across, and notably the thickness here. So this thickness drives the position of the low loss window. And so at 360 nanometers, um, we can expect 
that resonance to be around 800 nanometers and uh, the fundamental transmission window to be um, from around 1,000 nanometers up to maybe 1,800 nanometers. <clears throat> so this is the loss of that, of that fiber. Uh, and this was measured using cutback method. And you can see we've got a broad window that guides from somewhere around 850, 900 nanometers all the way up to 1800 nanometers below 100 dB per kilometer. So it's a huge bandwidth. <clears throat> so in terms of octave, that's one octave. Um, and you can see we've got almost thousand, over 1000 nanometers for that, that loss threshold. And uh, less than 30 dB per kilometer, we've got uh, over 400 nanometers. So it's a huge improvement from the state of the art at the time in anti-resonant fibers. However, if we look at the other fibers of the time, we have that PPGF, much, much lower losses, but very small bandwidth. Then a, a different PPGF, which has got the wide bandwidth, but the higher loss. And it's also note how this smooth and um, a different Kagome structure, again, with the narrow bandwidth. So huge bandwidth in comparison to the other structures. And in terms of increasing uh, the performance, reducing the loss, um, we have a few methods available to us. The first direct one is to make that structure a little bit more regular. Um, and also we see that um, that will reduce the loss down to 10 dB per kilometer. We also have the option of adding nested tubes, which was at the time only explored theoretically. And we'll see a bit more of that later. So the other reason these fibers are so good at broadband with uh, transmission is that the dispersion is low and flat and remains low across the entire low loss window. So where the resonance, um, the high loss resonance is that, that, that defines the beginning of the transmission window, the, the, the dispersion swings very aggressively. But as soon as we get to the low loss region, it levels out and stays below around 2.5 um, for the entire uh, transmission window. You compare that with SMF, which has only a very, a very steep transmission curve, uh, sorry, very steep dispersion curve, um, which does cause a lot of, uh, a lot of issues if you want to transmit data across the full bandwidth range. I think about single mode and modal content. So HCF are typically multi, uh, few moded. And this is because the core size is quite large. Um, however, the capillaries in the cladding support their own modes. So what can be done is we can choose the dimensions of these tubes to phase match cleanly with the higher order modes of the core. Um, so when they couple across, um, so if they're phase match, they will be coupling between those modes. And the tube modes being right next to the jacket glass are extremely high loss. So the light will couple from the core into the tube mode and then be lost to radiation. So after a few meters of transmission, we can um, have a very clean uh, single mode transmission. <clears throat> so this has also been performed in, um, in PPGF using the shunt cores, um, this exactly the same principle. The these shunt cores um, are sized to support the higher uh, a mode which is phase matched to the higher order mode of the core. So uh, modal content can be measured experimentally using uh, S two spatial and spectral imaging, um, and with our fiber we used a spliced input, and after three meters you get a very distinct LP one one measured at around twenty uh, minus twenty p twenty dB, but after a hundred meters. The, um, the uh, trace is clean and no LP11 uh, or other mode, in, in fact, is seen at all. <clears throat> so we conducted some data transmission experiments, and this is the first data transmission experiment in a hollow core fiber. Um, over 100 meters on off keying. Um, and we used three wavelengths to really demonstrate the breadth of the bandwidth. Um, 
1065, 1565, and 1963. And they all uh, performed with uh, BER penalty free. So I just want to tell you a little bit about what happened since 2016. So we've put in a lot of effort to uh, drive down the loss. So this required developing new structures and we managed to make great progress improving the transmission rate using WDM and recirculating loops. And that also meant we had to make longer spans of fiber. So looking at <laughs> HCF over the recent years, the generation of nested tubes um, entered into the literature. We have demonstrations from 2015 all the way up to our first uh, published NAMP in 2018, which is now better than that 2004 PPGF paper. Um, and since then, we've been just making more and more progress. Um, and um, until 2022, when we published our DNAMP paper. And this one has loss that is less than your, the classic 0.2 dB per kilometer of SMF um, in, in the S and the C band um, and comparable with some of the highest performing uh, single mode solid fibers. Uh, more to be published on this from us. So if we just have a quick look at the loss over the years, you can see that you get this remarkably similar curve of uh, loss progression um, in holocore fiber as we see in the solid fiber in the 70s. Um, so we're hoping this will keep going down a bit further than that, that solid, solid fiber record. So a little bit more about um, data transmission. Um, you can see the... Um, if we use recirculating loops and we have very high quality fiber and very delicately engineered experiments, then we can get several thousand kilometers of, of transmission. Um, in this experiment, we needed five to 12 kilometers of, of fiber in the loop. Um, so that's several hundred um, passes. And you can see that we managed to get um, almost 6,000 kilometers in uh, 2021. Um, so this would be the first PPGF, less than 100 kilometers, um, but using our ever-improving uh, NAMP fibers, we managed to get 6,000 kilometers in 2021. So in conclusion, um, we, uh, I presented this paper that we, we produced and published in 2016, 2017, um, demonstrating a tuber HCF with an octave spanning pan, but it was the first HCF capable of data transmission. And this fiber, like all holocore fibers, has uh, demonstrated low latency, ultra low dispersion, and low li non-linearity, single mode, and is compatible with spliced connectors. Uh, and since this fiber was, was published, um, we've also managed to drive the loss down to below SMF values. Okay, thank you for your attention. And I would point you if you are interested in to know more about holocore fibers to Eric's fantastic tutorial paper um, published um, recently this year. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. Uh, can you hear me? So, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it looks uh, like there are a few questions in the chat window. Yeah. Um, so let go through the first one. So the first one is from uh, Prague Mode. The question is: Can you tell uh, how holocore fiber feasible for the future network? Yes. I mean, it's the uh, a very um, important question. So. Um, Holocore fibers are obviously um, emerging in the literature, um, and we've demonstrated some some great results. Um, but if we compare them to SMF as an industrial product, um, the instant kind of difference is the the long spans. Um, solid fiber is made in thousands of kilometers at a time. Transoceanic cables with many many um, fibers within. 
So that's obviously extremely different to where we are with Holocore fiber right now. Um, however, for a short spans of tens of kilometers, um, you can get huge latency advantages. Um, so it's been already been deployed for use with um, high frequency trading, um, for example, where you know obviously the the high costs of, of deploying this kind of fiber has uh, as um, it can be offset by the advantages of that latency. Um, but also there are quantum applications and into into data center applications that also benefit from latency. Um, but yes, at the moment, I would say that they are reserved for high value links. Okay, great. Um, so the next is, um, how about the PMD um, of the NEV? On the PMD, polarization modal dispersion. Um, so um, we have Eric, um, my colleague, I pointed to his paper at the end there. He's done some fantastic work with um, Austin Taranta as well about polarization mode dispersion. Um, so these have some very interesting polarization properties, um, polarization maintaining properties. Um, so I can't give you any numbers off the top of my head, but I do think that they are, um, uh, they can be made to be polarization maintaining or have very good polarization properties. Um, if, but I, I, sorry, I can't give you any values off the top of my head, but yeah, I'd, I'd direct you to, uh, Austin Taranta or Eric Nunca Cure, um, for, for some more tangible results and theory. Okay. Um, so I think we can leave um, the rest of the questions to the end of the Q and A uh, panel. So now we um, move to our next speaker. So Greg will be uh, with us. So you can ask further questions after uh, all the talks uh, has been uh, finished. And Greg, if you'd like to answer any questions that do pop up in the chat window, you can do in the chat as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, our next uh, speaker. So our uh, next speaker will be um, Tasuya Hayashi-san from Sumitomo Electric Industries. So, um, Hayashi san um, got a PhD from University of uh, Hokkaido and after that he um, joined uh, Sumitomo and has been engaged in um, the development of optical fiber and fiber technologies and currently is the group leader for optical fiber research and the development for space division multiplexing. He has served and chaired many uh, conferences and including OFC, OECC. He's also an associate editor of JLT. So uh, for today's talk, um, Hayashi San will talk about their JLT paper with the title of Record Law, Spatial Mode Dispersion and Archer Law Laws Coupled Multi Core Fiber for Archer Long Haul Transmission. Okay, so um, Hayashi San, you can take over from here. Uh, let me stop sharing. I guess you have to take over. Yeah. Can you see my slide? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, my JRT paper is also the uh, extended paper from the OFC 2016 post paper. And uh, also the, uh, there is many progress from uh, the uh, publish of the uh, my JRT paper. So I'd rather uh, <clears throat> want to uh, include uh, more recent uh, results with a, with a review of uh, randomly coupled multiple fiber technologies. So <clears throat> the traffic network traffic is growing exponentially and uh, to support such an exponential growth of the uh, network, a single mode fiber capacity is also uh, increasing, exponentially increasing in the research field. 
And however, the uh, such a uh, growing of the uh, single mode fiber capacity is approaching to its fundamental limit. And in such situations, space division multiplexing, especially multi-core fiber, MCF, is uh, considered as the pr promising technology to break the, such a capacity limit. So uh, multi-core fiber could be, uh, can provide great benefit if the real estate, that is space, is limited due to the technical or economical reasons. So one of the strong uh, potential application is submarine long haul transmission system. And the other is data center application with a very high, de high, de high density and a high fiber count uh, uh, tables are necessary. So multiple fibers can be divided into two types. So one is weakly coupled multiple fiber and uh, another is strongly coupled multiple fibers. In the weakly coupled multiple fibers, the cross between the core is well suppressed so we can use each core as a uh, isolated individual single waveguide. <clears throat> and so uh, we can use uh, conventional transceiver technologies. In the strongly coupled multiple fibers, the cores are more tightly packed in the uh, cross section of the uh, fiber. So in such fiber, uh, signals are mixed between the cores and uh, such a uh, uh, mixing has to be uh, undo, undone in the uh, receiver side by a uh, multiple input, multiple, multiple output uh, digital signal processing. And uh, this strongly coupled multicore fiber can be all further divided into systematically coupled multicore fibers and uh, randomly coupled multicore fibers. The randomly coupled multicore fiber is the uh, most promising fiber for the uh, very high density, very long haul, <coughs> high capacity optical fiber transmission. In this kind of fiber, propagation modes randomly couple either in the whole mode or supermodal basis. And uh, such a random coupling has to be compensated by MIMO DSP. However, in MIMO systems, such a random mode coupling is quite beneficial, which supplies more dependent impairment. So uh, this is an uh, uh, example of a uh, uh, group delay spread, spread along the uh, uh, fiber propagation. In, and, uh, in the weakly coupled uh, regime, the DGD group delay, group delay, differential group delay, delay grows with uh, linearly uh, along the uh, fiber lengths. But uh, uh, in the randomly coupled regime, uh, DGD grows with a square root uh, uh, proportion to the fiber lengths. So uh, such a random, random coupling can suppress the uh, accumulation of the model dispersion, model dependent loss, and also can suppress a nonlinear in interference. By with a lower uh, model dispersion, uh, MIMO calculation complex complexity can be suppressed and a uh, lower MDL, uh, MIMO <coughs> outage probability can be suppressed. And uh, with a lower non-linear non interference, the trans transmission capacity can be increased. So uh, to achieve uh, such a random coupling uh, characteristics, there is an optimum core pitch between distance between the cores. If the cores are too tightly uh, placed, too closely placed, the uh, Propagation modes in these two cores uh, becomes a very stable super mode uh, propagation. So the uh, coupling between such a super modes can be very, very weak. And uh, very, uh, how can I say, the coupling between the core modes becomes systematic or deterministic. And uh, if the core cores are, are distant, the core, core to core coupling becomes uh, very weak. and uh, uh, also, in this regime, the coupling uh, is not sufficient to suppress a, 
uh, more dependent impairment. So uh, <clears throat> in between these uh, two regimes, there is a, a, a randomly coupled regime that can maximize the uh, random coupling between the cores or between the super modes. And in, in such regi regime, the uh, uh, optical characteristics or transmission characteristics of the uh, coupled multicore fiber become very uh, preferable for the outer long hole transmission. So, uh, if we think about the weakly coupled multicore fiber, we can use this kind of weakly coupled multicore fiber with uh, conventional transceivers, but the uh, uh, core count in one fiber is somewhat, uh, how can I say, uh, limited. There is a limitation of the upper limit of core count. So, if we stick, stick to the standard uh, core design or standard uh, types of the cores compatible with the uh, uh, standard uh, sigmoid fiber or current sigmoid fiber. And uh, if we want to stick to the standard cladding diameter of the 125 microns, uh, the maximum core count uh, that can be packed into the uh, multiple, weakly coupled multiple fiber is four or eight. So if we only use O band, uh, the core can be eight cores can be packed into the fiber, but uh, if we want a more wider band, like a O to C band or C plus L band, the uh, four core is the maximum in such a uh, situation. On the other side, uh, in the randomly coupled multicore fibers, core count can be more uh, scalable. So these are the, some examples of the uh, randomly coupled uh, multicore fibers. This four core fiber, was presented presented in the uh, J, JRT paper, and uh, uh, we can see three, four, seven, and nineteen cores fibers. So uh, these three, four, seven core fiber has a uh, effective area uh, more than one hundred square microns. So uh, how can I say? Uh, it's uh, very. Uh, easy to uh, splice and uh, uh, non-linearity of the multicore fiber, uh, such a multicore fiber is uh, very, very uh, suppressed uh, in the transmission. And uh, <clears throat> uh, with the four core fiber, uh, the pub published uh, result of the transmission loss is uh, 0 0.155 dB per kilometer at uh, 1550. Uh, and uh, uh, further lower loss can be possible, um, and uh, there is no, uh, how can I say, fundamental limit. This is uh, not a fundamental limit. The further lower loss can be uh, uh, possible. And uh, <coughs> uh, in the very recent result of the OFC in 2023 post deadline paper, the randomly coupled 19 cores fiber uh, was. Uh, uh, presented, and uh, with this uh, 19 core fiber, the uh, 1.7 petabit per second per fiber transmission was uh, demonstrated. So the uh, uh, randomly coupled multicore fiber is uh, more scalable on the core count, and uh, uh, how can I say, <coughs> uh, very fitted to increase uh, 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 transmission capacity of the uh, multicore fiber in more higher for more higher uh, capacity demand. So using such a, a randomly coupled four core fiber and seven core fiber, uh, Roland Reef in the Bell Labs conducted uh, a, a transmission experiment. And uh, in this experiment, uh, we, we compared uh, with four core fiber and seven core fiber, and uh, also uh, compared with a single, single core fiber. All the fiber has a similar uh, effective area, and uh, uh, as you can see, the randomly coupled core fiber has a higher uh, optimum launching power and a higher uh, Q factor after the transmission. So uh, we can see that uh, this randomly coupled core, randomly coupled multicore fiber has a uh, uh, better uh, nonlinear tolerance and uh, uh, such a non nonlinear 
uh, interference can be suppressed thanks to the uh, random, random coupling uh, characteristics. Also, such a randomly coupled focal fiber has deployed in the field uh, in the city of Italy. And uh, also after the uh, deployment, the uh, model dispersion was uh, very well uh, suppressed. The <coughs> also, using this transmission uh, deployed uh, testbed uh, transmission experiment has been conducted. And more than four more than 4,000 kilometer transmission was demonstrated. Also for the, uh, about the MIMO feasibility, there, there are, are many demonstrations from various uh, research groups. And uh, for the real-time MIMO demonstration, uh, <clears throat> three core fiber and four core fiber and seven core fiber uh, real-time MIMO transmission uh, demonst demonstrated. And, uh, for the four core fiber, more than 7,000 kilometer transmission was achieved with a real time MIMO DSP. Also, also for the long distance and high capacity transmission with our offline processing using a four core fiber and three core fiber, very uh, long distance and uh, high capacity transmission was uh, demonstrated with uh, coupled multi core fibers. So, uh, this is summary of my talk. So randomly coupled multi-core fiber technology is promising for the next generation transmission technologies. And the randomly coupled MCFs can achieve simultaneously auto low loss, large effective area, and a higher core count. And uh, although the random coupling requires MIMO DSP, but the transmission experiments have proved feasibility of random randomly coupled MCFs in long haul transmission and deployed condition. And uh, for the further improvement, power efficient multi-core amplifier will be uh, effective for capacity improvement in power limited system. And uh, with further study on the switching technologies and an architecture, the story next network networks can also be the application area. And uh, <clears throat> uh, more details of the uh, this talk, more details overview of this talk with uh, additional uh, review on the fiber characterization, connectivity, cabling amplifier can be found in our more recent review paper in the proceedings of the IEEE uh, published in the last year. So you can find also this paper about the more details of the randomly coupled multi-core fibers. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Hayashi-san, for the great talk. So, so far we have two questions um, we can find in the chat. So the first question, the first question is from uh, Ray Hunt. So he asked for uh, what is the amplifi amplification process in strongly coupled fiber that can support S, C and L bands? So, uh, uh, for the randomly coupled, can I say, so, Coupled multi-core fiber amplifier is uh, basically less, very similar to the uh, weekly coupled multi-core fiber amplifier. And also the, such a multi-core fiber amplifier is basically uh, uh, using a similar physical uh, background of the uh, single called single mode uh, amplifiers. So if we want to amplify S-band, maybe we can use a bitmap mass stopped amplifier, or maybe we can use a, a, a Raman amplification, or maybe we can use a, a how can I say, a wavelengths a conversion a, for the, a, a, to amplify a S-band signal a, in the C-band by using a C-band amplif amplifiers. So, uh, Basically, the, uh, such uh, kind of uh, technology can be used for the S plus C plus L band transmission using uh, randomly coupled multi-core fibers. Okay, um, so the second question is from the, uh, also, also from Rehamt. So the question is about, uh, I think, because uh, network integration is, so he asked, um, so how to integrate the couple core fiber into optical network 
uh, for example, where you need uh, to add in the job wavelengths like Rodan, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, when we think about the uh, uh, switching of the <coughs> upper vertical fibers, maybe we would like to uh, uh, can I say uh, use a uh, special special super channel as a one how can I say uh, switching uh, uh, granularity so if we uh, we can switch can I say, we can add and drop a, a specific wavelength channel uh, with a, a whole special uh, super channel and uh, <coughs> by using a, such a special super channel as a, a switching granularity, of course we can avoid uh, MIMO DSP at the each uh, switching or switch or rodems. And uh, if we're thinking about, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, transceiver, transceiver uh, line rate is also exponentially, exponentially increasing. And uh, how can I say, the uh, line uh, capacity is also increasing uh, with a uh, year by year. Uh, we can, how can I say, we can uh, utilize a, a special super channel as a good uh, uh, size of the, uh, how can I say, uh, channel capacity. So that uh, in such uh, how can I say? In such way of uh, switching and uh, use of the special super channel, uh, maybe the uh, randomly coupled uh, multiple fiber network can be uh, realized. So th that that is my answer. Um, thanks. So, uh, Hayashan, there are more questions in the chat uh, panel, so you can answer the question. Uh, so I think we can, uh, should move to the our final speaker. Uh, to stick with the uh, schedule. So uh, thanks, Hayashi-san, again. Uh, so the next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Uh, Ming-Jun Li, uh, who is the recipient of uh, the 2023 uh, Tindall Award. And Dr. Uh, Li got a PhD from University of Nice. Then he joined uh, Coney Incorporate in 1991. So currently he is a corporate fellow. Uh, he has been um, working on so many different fiber technologies and he um, holds uh, 250 US patents and has published six book chapters and over uh, more than 300 papers. So Dr. Lee is a member of U.S. National um, Academy of Engineering and also was elected to be the uh, National Inventors Hall of, of Fan for Clean Curve uh, Band in Synthetic Optical Fiber. Um, so, uh, so for this year, he was awarded uh, with 2023 Tyndall Award uh, for seminal contributions to advan uh, advances in optical fiber technology. So in today's uh, talk, uh, Dr. Uh, Lee will talk about reduced coating diameter fiber for high density optical interconnect. So um, Dr. Lee, you can uh, take over from here. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you, Hao Shou, uh, for the introduction. Uh, let, me, uh, let me share my slides. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Um, uh, first, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to uh, this uh, uh, journal club to give this uh, presentation. Um, uh, also, before I I, I start, I I'd like to acknowledge my co-workers. Uh, for their contributions. Uh, so 
the talk of my talk is reduced uh, coating diameter fiber for high density optical interconnects. Um, so the topic is not as exciting as uh, the previous uh, two speakers talk about the hollow core and the multi-core fiber. You know, this is a more uh, conventional fiber. We're trying to push uh, the limit, you know, to increase uh, uh, the cable um, uh, fiber density. Uh, so, okay. Okay, now that it's small. Um, okay, so uh, I think you 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 have uh, heard the word, you know, the uh, uh, or from uh, uh, reading papers, uh, you know, the uh, that the uh, the traffic in data centers uh, <clears throat> me, uh, has been grow growing very uh, rapidly uh, in uh, recent years. Uh, so the data centers, uh, you know, the uh, 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 asking for uh, high bandwidth uh, uh, with uh, the uh, high density optical interconnects. And so to meet uh, the uh, the bandwidth demand, uh, the uh, the new fibers uh, uh, have been proposed, such as the multi-core fiber, uh, as you just heard from uh, the, uh, the the second speaker. Uh, or the uh, uh, multi multi fiber or few multi fiber. Um, but however, for these new fibers, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, they have new challenges. You know, the, uh, uh, for example, you know, we need to, uh, uh, to have a low cost of fiber manufacturing. Otherwise, the cost would be uh, too high. Also, the fan in, fan out were mod max D mark devices. Um, the, are very important that we need to have a uh, reliable low cost uh, devices uh, to be used with uh, these fibers and and also for installation you know splicing and uh, uh, connectorization are also very important uh, uh, issues and uh, so on the other hand you know the uh, um, uh, we can, uh, you know, reduce uh, the fiber diameter, you know, to increase uh, the uh, the fiber density. Um, for reduced uh, diameter fiber, however, there are also challenges. Uh, the two key challenges: um, one is microbending performance; the other one is uh, mechanical uh, reliability. Uh, so the uh, the conventional uh, optical fiber is about you know 250 micron uh, diameter. Um, if we use this uh, as a baseline, you know, if we reduce the coating um, diameter to, for example, to 175, so we can increase uh, the fiber density by a factor of two. Um, if we Reduce further, you know, to uh, 145, we can increase by a factor of three. Uh, of course, if uh, we, you know, we uh, make a 125 micron uh, coated fiber, we can uh, increase the density by a factor of four. And so currently, uh, the uh, 200 uh, micron were, you know, the uh, also people they launched the 190 uh, micron diameter fiber. Um, now they're commercially uh, available. Now the question is, can we uh, reduce the coating diameter further? You know, the for example, you know, the uh, to uh, 165 or or below. Uh, this is the focus uh, of uh, uh, our uh, our paper. You know, the in this work. Yeah. So basically, there are two approaches. Uh, you know, for reducing uh, fiber diameter. Uh, one is uh, uh, you reduce both the colliding diameter and the coating diameter. You know, for example, reduce the colliding diameter to uh, 80 micron. The other approach is uh, uh, keep the colliding diameter to uh, the standard uh, size 125 micron and only reduce uh, the coating uh, diameter. Uh, so for uh, for the reduced the clad, uh, diameter fiber or RCF, uh, one uh, uh, 
advantage is uh, it has better bending uh, reliability because uh, the glass is thinner. Um, however, the uh, the micro bending um, uh, sensitivity uh, is increased due to a smaller glass diameter. Uh, and also for uh, uh, reduce the cladding diameter, you know, the uh, for you need new connectivity solutions uh, uh, because the current uh, yeah, ecosystems uh, is uh, for 125 micron uh, cladding diameter. And uh, for uh, the, the second approach, you know, the, we keep the uh, cladding diameter the same, only reduce uh, the coating diameter. Uh, so the the nice thing about this approach is uh, it's uh, compatible with uh, the standard equipment uh, and uh, the installation procedure. And, <clears throat> and however, the micro bending uh, sensitivity and the mechanical reliability um, uh, could be a challenge. Uh, could be uh, you know the uh, the new challenges because uh, the coating is thinner. Uh, let's look at uh, micro bending first. You know the uh, um, so we we uh, divide uh, micro bending into two categories. Uh, one is uh, we call the uh, intrinsic uh, micro bending. You know this is basically due to uh, the, the, the 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 thermal buckling. You know when you make fiber, uh, you have the glass and the coating. They have a uh, different uh, uh, thermal expansion coefficients. Uh, so the uh, uh, if the stress um, the uh, is too high uh, on the glass, so the fiber can be buckled. You know the, this is uh, uh, not due to the uh, external uh, forces, uh, just due to the fiber structure itself. Uh, so we call this uh, intrinsic uh, uh, micro bending. Uh, the other type is extrinsic micro bending. Um, is uh, you know when you have uh, external perturbations, uh, you know you apply pressure or force, uh, so the fiber can um, can be deformed, uh, causing the uh, uh, micro bending issue. So for both type of uh, micro bending, um, the the glass diameter, coating material and thickness, uh, and the uh, the profile design, they uh, uh, they all can uh, affect um, the micro bending, uh, both type of micro bending uh, uh, performance. Um, so let's look at the intrinsic micro bending. Uh, so for uh, intrinsic micro bending, uh, we define the, the uh, uh, buckling strain. You know, the uh, uh, it's the difference. Uh, you know, the uh, between the uh, the string applied to the fiber uh, minus the you know the minus the uh, the string that glass can uh, tolerate you know if uh, this uh, uh, buckling string is uh, large enough then the fiber will buckle so when the fiber buckle you know we uh, uh, we can uh, use uh, uh, the uh, bending diameter. Um, uh, or bending radius uh, to uh, uh, describe uh, the buckling effect. You know, we can calculate uh, the bending radius using uh, this uh, uh, this formula. You know, basically it depends on the uh, the glass, uh, the uh, uh, radius, and the Young's modulus uh, of the glass. Um, so on the the uh, the right the 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 plot shows the model of the uh, intrinsic micro bending sensitivity. Uh, so what you can see that you know the uh, the smaller glass diameter and the thicker uh, coating diameter uh, increases uh, the intrinsic micro bending. Uh, yeah, for example, uh, the the uh, if we uh, Make uh, the uh, 165 micro uh, micron uh, coating diameter. Uh, you know, for the 80 micron glass diameter, the intrinsic micro bending sensitivity uh, <clears throat> uh, 
it's uh, uh, it's about you know nine to ten times uh, higher than the uh, 125. Yeah, this is why you know if you make a 80 micron glass diameter, you have put uh, the low index trench uh, to reduce the micro bending. You cannot use a simple step index, otherwise the uh, the micro bending loss. Uh, 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 it, it's a uh, it's too high, right? Yeah. Um, so of course, you know, you you can uh, change the 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 uh, the geometry and uh, uh, mechanical properties of uh, fiber coating, and also use a different profile design to improve the intrinsic micro bending. And uh, for the intrinsic micro bending, you know, the micro bending laws basically proportional to this uh, the. Uh, 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 the deformation spectrum, you know, the uh, 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 from this uh, spectrum, you, you can see the most important pro parameter. One is the the glass, um, the glass, uh, you know, diameter and uh, the Young's modulus. Uh, the second most important parameter is uh, the primary coating, you know, Young's modulus uh, and uh, uh, and the thickness. Um, so the graph on the uh, on the right you. You see the uh, model, the extrinsic microbending uh, sensitivity. Uh, so it's clear that uh, you know the uh, smaller diameter, smaller glass diameter, and the thinner coating uh, increases uh, the extrinsic uh, uh, microbending. So again, you know we see the uh, uh, advantage of uh, keep the glass diameter, you know the uh, uh, as a standard. Uh, so uh, not reduced to uh, the, uh, to 80 micron yeah, because uh, uh, the glass diameter is uh, very important uh, for uh, micro bending uh, 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 performance. And also, you can uh, you know again you, know, you can uh, improve the uh, uh, Young's modulus uh, uh, and the geometry of the fiber coating material. Um, uh, also, most important for uh, extrinsic microbending, you reduce the uh, the external uh, pressure or force applied uh, to the fiber. You know, for example, you can uh, have a better design uh, of the cable, and also you can use uh, uh, different profile designs such as a trench assisted uh, assisted profile design to improve the micro uh, intrans extrinsic microbending performance. Uh, yeah, this uh, the, uh, two graphs. One sh um, one shows uh, the uh, extrinsic microbending uh, as a function of uh, the, uh, the 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 glass diameter, but for different uh, primary uh, coating. You know, the uh, uh, as I mentioned, the primary coating is uh, uh, very important for the microbending performance. We can see from this graph, you know, if the the uh, uh, primary uh, coating modulus is, uh, is reduced, uh, now the uh, you can uh, lower the uh, micro bending sensitivity. On the other hand, uh, the secondary um, coating Young's mod modulus, you know, has a, um, almost no effect, you know, the uh, uh, on the micro bending sensitivity. Um, for the uh, fiber mechanical reliability, you know there um, there are two aspects. One is uh, the fiber strength. Uh, so normally we use a proof test uh, uh, to uh, ensure that the fiber uh, strength distribution has a, a minimum strength level. Uh, for uh, terrestrial applications. Uh, the proof test uh, stress level is uh, 700 megapascal or 100 uh, kpsi. Um, you know this requirement. You know the uh, uh, has to be met by the uh, you know the uh, uh, reduced the coating diameter fiber. Um, uh, for uh, uh, another aspect is uh, the puncture resistance. You know, when you have a, a, 
uh, particles, you know, the uh, apply to the coating, you know, the particle can damage the coating. And uh, if the particle touch the glass, it can cause uh, damage. So for um, the puncture resistance, uh, uh, currently there are no uh, industrial standards uh, and, uh, uh, and the test the procedure. So internally, we use, uh, 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 we call it a coating uh, indentation uh, test method. You know, the, uh, we use a sharp uh, object to uh, press against the coating uh, to quantify the damage uh, uh, resistance. So for uh, puncture resistance, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you can uh, change the coating material, you know, to uh, improve the puncture uh, resistance. Um, uh, but I think, you know, the, the, the most important requirement, uh, you know, for uh, RCDF uh, uh, the, is no breaks, you know, the, uh, when you uh, make, uh, uh, when you handle the fiber and make it uh, into cable. Uh, I think after you make it into cable, you have uh, 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 additional protection, uh, uh, protection layers. I think the, uh, then, uh, um, then the coating uh, becomes less important. Yeah. So we have made uh, uh, the uh, uh, reduce the coating diameter fiber. As you can see, uh, uh, the examples uh, show here. Uh, you know, we made the coating diameter. You know, from one twenty five to uh, one hundred seventy <clears throat> uh, seventy five micron. Um, from these pictures, you can see that. The uh, the coating you know has a very uh, good uh, you know the uh, uh, geometry you know there is a very uh, good uh, concentricity and uh, uh, uniformity uh, you know for the uh, profile design you know the uh, uh, we we use the three type of uh, um, uh, profiles um, so one. Uh, uh, is the simple uh, step index uh, design, and uh, the second type is a dual collide. You know, we have uh, uh, slightly lower uh, inner colliding and the raised the uh, outer colliding, and the, the third type is uh, you know the trench uh, uh, assisted uh, profile design. Um, this table shows uh, the uh, the typical you know the uh, uh, fiber, uh, the uh, geometry and the optical uh, performance. Um, what what you can see from this uh, table, you know, for the dual um, coated uh, fiber, uh, we we dual coated fiber is uh, you know the uh, 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 with the coating diameter, you know, the above, uh, 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 above, about 140 uh, microns. Uh, the, uh, the attenuation on the shipping rail, uh, almost no penalty, you know, compares to the 250 micron coated fiber. Uh, for the single coated fiber, we really thin, uh, only a single layer coated fiber. Um, the uh, attenuation is uh, slightly higher, but, but uh, it's still uh, uh, low enough, you know, for short, uh, for short, uh, rich uh, applications. Um, so the uh, the attenuation test on shipping rail, you know, the confirmed that the uh, the RCTF the the fibers have excellent, uh, you know, the uh, intrinsic uh, microbending uh, performance. So for uh, extrinsic microbending uh, performance, we use uh, uh, a wire mesh test. You know the as show uh, uh, show uh, in, in this slide. And so basically, we wrap fiber uh, on the, the uh, uh, a sandpaper, and uh, uh, then the, the uh, apply force. And, you know the uh, you can calculate the you know the force applied to the fiber. Uh, it it, it, it uh, depends on the the winding tension and also the uh, the spool uh, radius. 
Um, so here are the uh, uh, the test results for different uh, coating diameters and uh, also for uh, different uh, uh, profile uh, designs. Um, from the graph on the left, uh, you can see clearly, you know, uh, the uh, when you reduce the coating diameter, you know, the uh, micro bending and sensitivity, uh, uh, you know, increases. Uh, the, the uh, so from uh, um, this data, you know, we, you know, the our analysis show that uh, the micro bending uh, attenuation increase, uh, you know, the uh, scales uh, with uh, this, uh, the uh, primary coating thickness and uh, the multi-field uh, um, uh, multi uh, uh, diameter. Um, so to uh, reduce uh, the uh, extrinsic microbending, you know, you can use a thicker primary coating uh, or, <clears throat> or uh, a lower uh, Young's modulus uh, coating material. And, and for profile design, you can reduce multi-field diameter or use uh, the low index uh, uh, trench design. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, for the extrinsic microbending, you know, the one very important factor is that you minimize uh, the external force applied to the fiber. If you don't have a force applied to the fiber, then you don't have a microbending problem. And, to uh, uh, to show that you know we did a loose coil uh, fiber test, um, uh, so we use uh, the uh, uh, a loose coil diameter of uh, twenty point three centimeter. You know the uh, uh, then we did temperature cycling because uh, uh, in the cable uh, micro bending you know the uh, happens uh, most at the lower temperature. And so from this uh, uh, temperature cycling on loose coil, you can see different coating diameters. Uh, the attenuation change is uh, almost uh, 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 nearly zero, very small. And uh, you know the um, uh, even the coating diameter one sixty five, you know the uh, attenuation change is very similar. So. Uh, these results confirm that you know if you have no force uh, applied to the fiber, so basically there are uh, no uh, there are no micro bending problem. Um, so uh, we did uh, uh, also proof tests on the fiber uh, from coating diameter one forty, you know the uh, to uh, you know about one seventy, uh, you know for uh, the. Uh, uh, 160 and 170 micron coating diameter, you know, the, uh, the break rate uh, increase uh, slightly compared to the, the standard uh, 242 uh, two micron. Um, we think we can, uh, you know, improve the, you know, the uh, break rate to uh, a level similar to the standard coating diameter by improve the environmental, uh, the, uh, uh, by control the, you know, the, uh, uh, basically, the uh, the particles in the uh, in the environment, uh, you know, uh, all the fiber we made in the R&D requirement is not as good as uh, the production environment. Um, on the other hand, you know, for coating diameter, you know, the 140, we see a singly, significantly higher uh, uh, a break rate. You know, from uh, uh, this uh, the test result, you know, we we think 170, you know, the uh, Around what, 160 to 170 coating diameter um, uh, is feasible. Uh, for the puncture resistance, uh, and we uh, you know we tested uh, different uh, uh, fiber diameters and uh, uh, different uh, coating diameters. You know basically the puncture resistance uh, scales uh, with uh, the secondary uh, coating cross sectional area. For each given type of coating, you know, basically it's a straight line. You know, the uh, uh, when you increase the uh, uh, the secondary coating cross section, uh, but the different material, you know, can have a different slope. You know, for example, you know, in, on this graph, uh, you see the uh, the blue and the the right line compared to the baseline. You know, the uh, uh, the the uh, 
uh, the normal commercial available coating, you know, the uh, the red and blue, you know, has a much better uh, puncture resistance. You know, for example, uh, you know, the blue line, you know, the uh, you can have a 100, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 165 micron coated diameter with, uh, you know, the uh, puncture resistance, you know, the uh, uh, better than the uh, 200 micron coated diameter uh, using the conventional coating material. Uh, to uh, uh, show the feasibility of uh, reduce the coating diameter fiber, you know, we did a, a cable trial. Um, uh, this shows the uh, schematic of uh, the uh, the cable structure. You know, it, it has uh, eight tubes. So we, uh, each tube uh, has uh, uh, 24 fibers, uh, 25 four fibers. Uh, um, uh, then we use uh, the uh, 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 two uh, different, uh, you know, the uh, tube diameters, and uh, we, then we can uh, change uh, the air field fraction. You know, basically changing the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the pressure or force applied to the fiber. Uh, <clears throat> uh, during the uh, uh, temperature uh, uh, cycling, you know, in the cable trial, uh, we uh, we handle the fiber uh, the using the uh, standard uh, tool. Uh, we found, you know, the we did not have any issues uh, handling the uh, uh, the reduced coating diameter fiber. Uh, also, we did not see uh, any. Uh, fiber breaks uh, during the cable uh, processing, um, and also the the, the sub subsequent you know the uh, cable uh, testing. Um, now uh, let me show you the, uh, the 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 cable result you know the uh, uh, on the uh, attenuation change, uh, and, and, and you know, that shows the uh, uh, the the minus uh, 40 degree um, uh, degree C uh, attenuation change. <clears throat> uh, so for, from the uh, uh, the graph uh, on the top, yeah, you can see that uh, the uh, the fiber free space uh, has a, a big impact on the uh, micro bending uh, micro bending performance. You know, basically, you know, if you have enough uh, free space, you know, you can uh, 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 you can uh, reduce the micro bending uh, to uh, uh, you know a certain uh, a certain level. You know, the uh, so 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 we uh, we use uh, you know the the standard uh, uh, temperature cycling uh, procedure. Uh, in the standard, you know, basically you know, they use uh, uh, about 25 dB uh, as uh, the maximum allowed change at minus uh, 40 degrees C, and uh, so we use uh, about 15, you know, to to in order to have a guard band for our fiber uh, uh, fiber performance. Uh, you know, from the, the 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 graph on the top, you can see that you know for uh, the 160 and 170 micron coated fiber. Uh, so the free space need to be greater than uh, 46 um, for the 160 or the 41% for 170 micron to ensure that attenuation is below, you know, the uh, uh, 0.15 dB. Um, uh, also depends on the design, you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what I just mentioned is uh, for the uh, dual collide, uh, if you use a trench assisted de design for 170 micron coated fiber, the free space can be reduced to about 40, uh, uh, 40 percent. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, th you may think, you know, the, uh, you know, increase the free space, you know, the uh, basically, you know, you, 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 you reduce the cable density. Uh, but if you look at the graph uh, uh, on the the, the 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 lower right, um, it, that shows the, the relative density versus the free space. You know, for a given uh, uh, for a given uh, uh, coating diameter, you know the uh, the free space changes only slightly. Uh, 
uh, the, the relative density, but the coating diameter is itself uh, has much bigger impact. You know, the basically you reduce the coating diameter, the fiber much thinner. Then you allow a little bit more free space to uh, uh, reduce micro bending. And, you know, the, uh, for both 160 and 170, you know, the uh, uh, the coating diameters, uh, uh, you know, for the free space, you know, the range, you know, we uh, we can, uh, you know, it's changed slightly, but we still can have a, a factor uh, uh, improvement, uh, you know, over over two, you know, for the uh, for the two coating diameters. Okay, so this, uh, uh, yeah, the last, uh, um, uh, uh, the last, uh, you know, the two slides I'm going to show is uh, uh, now, you know, here we can use a uh, thin coated fiber for uh, making connectors using direct ferro insertion without strip the coating. Uh, so for this application, you know, we make the uh, coating diameter is 125 uh, uh, micron, uh, the same uh, uh, diameter as uh, the standard glass diameter, um, but we we reduce the glass diameter slightly, you know, to uh, 115. Um, uh, so uh, now because we we don't strip the coating, now the uh, the fiber with coating is like uh, the standard uh, diameter fiber, so we can. Uh, uh, insert the fiber with coating, you know, into the connector ferro to uh, to make connectors. Uh, so in this way that we, you know, the uh, we we can reduce uh, the uh, the damage um, uh, on the glass significantly because uh, now the glass has a thin layer of coating, uh, and also um, um, the uh, we think it can improve the long term reliability. You know, the uh, because uh, uh, there are no flow on the glass when you insert uh, the uh, fiber into the uh, ferro. Uh, so we, we made uh, you know the connectors uh, and uh, uh, tested their performance. You know the uh, uh, you know basically the, uh, the 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 insertion loss and the return loss. You know their uh, uh, we, we can uh, you know achieve the performance of, uh, very similar to the. Uh, the conventional uh, uh, connectors uh, and also the the core to ferro concentricity, as you can see here, is also uh, similar to normal connectors. Okay, that's uh, uh, come to the end of uh, my talk. You know the uh, so we have shown that the uh, uh, the the reduced uh, coating diameter is promising for increase uh, the uh, uh, the cable density, you know, we have discussed the, the key design considerations. Uh, the uh, for RCDF, uh, and uh, we show how to uh, improve the micro bending performance uh, and the mechanical reliability. Um, and we made, uh, you know, the uh, uh, RCDF fibers uh, uh, with, uh, you know, very good uh, optical and the mechanical performance. Uh, and uh, our cable trial shows that uh, you know the uh, uh, RCDF uh, could be cabled with no 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 issues. Uh, and finally, we show that uh, you know 125 micron coated fiber can uh, be used for making connectors uh, without stripping the coating. So we believe the uh, the reduced coating diameter fiber, you know, with a diameter less than 175. Uh, are promising for high density cable and the connection.